This car belongs to my kid. He traded a broken dirt bike for this broken car and spent a year working on it. He kind of got it running, but not so much, and then he left town. He's gone for two years. He's serving a mission for the church where he spends his time sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with people in another area. While he's gone, I'm doing what I can to spruce this car up. I've got it to where it's fairly mechanically sound, but I'm working through a bunch of little gremlins. The challenge I'm working on today is a turbo issue. This car still has the stock ECU, and I learned the hard way that the stock ECU has a boost cutout built into it. If the turbo boost reaches a pressure of about eight, eight and a half pounds, the ECU has a cutout built into it based on the signal from the MAV sensor that kills the fuel to the secondary injectors. So what happens? You're cruising along, the boost gets up over 8.5 and the whole thing just kind of shuts down on you and you get some strange behavior. Why it was doing that originally, I didn't know. It's just part of the programming. It's the way the ECU is built. I'm planning to replace the ECU, we'll get there. But before I do so, I really want to get the turbo under control. This turbo is kicking out around 13 pounds of boost and well, I suppose that's okay, under the right circumstances, meaning you can get sufficient fuel to go with it and you're doing it deliberately. The problem I have is that I can't keep it below 13 pounds. While the long game includes an ECU, the short game that's on the table right now is to stop the boost creep coming out of this turbo. The turbo on this car has about a six or seven pound spring in it. If I put air pressure to the actuator for the wastegate, it cracks at about five or six pounds and it's fully open at 10. So why am I getting 13 pounds of boost? Well, I can only figure one thing. The exhaust is non-restrictive. The pre-cat has been removed, so it's pretty free-flowing. The free-flowing exhaust probably creates a situation where the wastegate is insufficient to bypass the turbine effectively, and so it keeps winding up. Well, I've got a turbo controller in the car, but a turbo controller doesn't help reduce turbo levels. All it does is allow you to go higher than what the mechanical actuator will do. So I can't get the boost down, and even with the boost controller completely turned off, I'm pushing 13 pounds of boost. I don't like that. Now, I don't mind the option of increasing to maybe 12, 13, but good grief. I think that should be on the high end. I think standard boost should be closer to eight, maybe a low setting at 10 and a high setting at 12 something to that effect. Well, to get there, what I have to do is change the mechanics of the turbo so that by default, it maxes out at about eight pounds. Well, the only way I know to do that is to modify the wastegate to allow more exhaust gases to bypass the turbine through the wastegate. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull this turbo off. We're gonna examine what's there. I don't even know. I haven't looked at this thing ever. So we're gonna pull the wastegate mechanism apart. I think from there, what I'm going to do is take the die grinder to the wastegate, bore the whole thing out so that it's a little bit bigger. Probably then from there, that will necessitate a larger cap on the wastegate arm so that it can seal that off and put it back together that way and give it a go. So that's where we are, right? Step one, fix the turbo so that it doesn't exceed maybe eight pounds by default, right? Using the stock mechanism. Then once we've got the turbo under control, we can start thinking about how to jazz things up with a standalone ECU. That decision is made. For the most part, the homework is done. I know how I want to put it together. Now I just need to procure some parts. We'll do that one at another time. The stock wastegate is in the neighborhood of 15 millimeters. And the little cap on the wastegate, 21. <laughs> That brought us up to 21 or 22, and I originally thought that might be enough. Now what I'm thinking is that while I'm here, I'd rather make it big. Nice. I've never felt quite so much like a dentist in my life. Better to be on this end of the drill, I'll tell you that. That's quite a little bit of work. Takes some patience. This started out as a 15 millimeter diameter hole, which means that it's got about 175 square millimeter of open area. I bored it out to a 20 millimeter hole, which gives it closer to a 300 and maybe 300 and a little bit square millimeter opening, which is not quite double. And after thinking about that overnight, I decided that I wanted to go bigger. So I cut that washer back off, 
and bored this out now to where it's just a little bit over 25 millimeter. And it's a little conical, so it's a little more open toward the inside of the runner than it is at the outside. That gives us about a 500 square millimeter opening. So from stock 175-ish to the first point where I stopped at 300 and change, we're now pushing a 500 square millimeter opening, which is about three times the size of the original hole in, in terms of area. And presumably that would equate to three times the flow. I think that's pretty good. Now I've seen some things online where people are going up to 40 millimeter or so they claim. That, wow, I, mean, I don't even, the only way to do that would be to cut into here, like not just a little bit, but a lot. And then probably offset the hole a little bit, I don't know. Anyway, I'm feeling pretty good at three times the flow. There are a few things I was mindful of. I wanted this to be as smooth as possible to avoid any turbulence. That should help free up the airflow. I also wanted to make sure that there's enough clearance on the gate that even when the metal expands, it won't hit. So there's, there's quite a bit of clearance all the way through there, more than a millimeter all the way up and down. I also needed this plate, this washer, to be thick enough that it won't warp or cause trouble when it gets up to high temperature. That one is a, at least three millimeters thick, and so I think that should be sufficient. It looks like it shuts well. The mechanism seems to be working well. We're ready to uh, put things back together and see what we've got. Since I've added a little thickness to the arm, I need to make sure that this can open far enough to allow good flow. So I took a chunk of metal off right here where the top of the wastegate arm hits the backing plate. That should bias at least the three millimeter that I lost by adding some additional material to it. So that's my full open. Yeah, opening any more than that doesn't make any difference. I mean, it's the hole's the restriction point, so I feel good about that. I must say that I find it a tad ironic that after all of the discussions with Bryson about what a pain in the caboose this car would be, I am now <laughs> I am now tackling the project a solo. Which is okay. It's kind of a labor of love at this point, right? So what I just did was I um, ported the wastegate. Okay. And when you watch the video, you'll know what that means. Yeah, I, was gonna say, I, don't I don't know if you paid attention, but this car was pushing about 13 pounds of boost. That's too much. I remember you mentioning it in a video. It bothers me. I don't mind going up that high. In a so it still does it or it doesn't do it anymore? Well, that's what we're going to find out right now. I don't mind it going up high in a controlled fashion. But, but that's not controlled. That was, that was 13 pounds out of my control. That's what I don't like. Now, it should cap out around 8. And I have the controller. Oh, I need to turn that off. It just off. went over 8. Is that right? No, that's under 8. Oh, is that negative? No. Yeah, really? that's negative. Yeah. Okay, so now the boost controller is turned off. So it's just running on the mechanicals. Okay. And yeah, that's a vacuum. That's negative. That's okay. In fact, we want that to be around seven or eight at idle. Even higher is better. It's the boost that we're trying to control. right there didn't it that's good actually i'm happy yeah i mean I, I wanted it to be down around eight but i pushed hard right there and it never it never went up to 13 14 where it's been so i'm you know all things considered i'm pretty happy with that well i'm thrilled with the result that's exactly what i was hoping for for the most part it peaks at eight i do still get a little bit of boost creep up around 10 but that's the highest that I ever saw it go, and I was pushing pretty hard at that point. So we got the result we were looking for. Not only that, but now I finally got to test the boost controller without being afraid of grenading the engine. So I can get a 10% boost with the boost controller, and what do I get? I get a 10% boost, as expected. So I'm right where I want to be. I'm happy with that. And I got to tell you, 
this car is an absolute riot to drive. So much fun. Signing out. I'll catch you on the next one.